Hi, Mom. Good morning, everyone, and welcome anyone who are anyone who is visiting us. Hope you feel welcome here. Uh, for a few minutes this morning, we're going to talk about brooms, bread, and breakfast. Brooms. The word broom actually comes from the blackberry bush because people in ancient days would just break off a piece of the bush and use it to sweep away the front door or their kitchen or their houses or their caves. And there's all kinds of brooms. There's push brooms, angle brooms, whisk brooms, corn brooms. Officially, there's 19 different kinds of brooms. I will mention them and there will be a test. <laughs> Just kidding. Has anyone here ever used a broom? Almost everybody, right? Okay. There's an old Irish proverb, a new broom may sweep clean, but an old broom knows the corners. The broom actually symbolizes sweeping away negative energy, dust and dirt, and in some cultures it's associated with magic, witches, and there's all kinds of broom superstitions. For instance, if you want to be a good cook, you're supposed to lay a broom under the dining room table. So let me know if that works. <laughs> if you want a good sleep and no nightmares, you're supposed to put a broom under the bed. And if a guest is overstaying at your house, <laughs> you're supposed to stand up a broom in the doorway in the back and ev evidently then that person will leave. And one of them that's strong in many cultures is that you never, ever, ever, ever bring an old broom to a new house. Just so you know. First reading is from the book, first book of Kings. We've got Elijah on a day's journey in the desert. He's tired. He wants to die. He's looking for some shade. And he sits under a broom tree. Now, what is a broom tree? When I was little and I was sitting where you're sitting and I heard this reading, I thought, wow, God thought of everything. And I imagined in my mind that there was a tree with different brooms hanging on it. And if you needed a broom, you just went and got one. A broom tree. It's actually in the juniper family. And to imagine what it looks like, imagine an umbrella. It grows like an umbrella. So it doesn't grow up. It grows out. And it's a safe haven and a shelter in a desert. People look for them to sit under because that's the only shade that they might possibly have. And if you're ever desperate and lost in a desert, you can actually eat the roots of a broom tree. So Elijah sits under the broom tree. He's sad. He's ready to die. And God sends an angel with food and drink. So the message loud and clear is that God is your broom tree. He's your shelter. He's your safe haven. He will provide you food and drink on any kind of mountain that you need to climb. Bread. There's all kinds of bread. You go around the world, everybody has some kind of bread. There's Italian bread, French bread, Polish rye, cinnamon toast, whole wheat, sourdough, Kaiser rolls and croissants, hot dog buns, multi-grain, brioche, ciabatta, pumpernickel. There's cornbread, focaccia, pita bread, Jewish challah. There's Hawaiian rolls, wonder bread, potato rolls, garlic bread, Irish soda bread, beer bread, French toast. Are you hungry yet? And there's Holy Communion. There's Holy Communion. There's living bread from heaven. There's our daily bread. There's manna in our desert. There's living bread that came down from heaven, our beloved Lord Jesus Christ. 
Second reading, say Paul's writing to the people at Ephesus, North Lake, and Manches. And he says, dear brothers and sisters, do you know how much God loves you? Do you know how much God loves you? You've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. At baptism, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. You're God's own beloved children. So St. Paul says, be imitators of God. Live in love. Forgive one another. Be kind. Be compassionate. He says, after all, you are companions on the journey home to heaven. Companions. Another word about bread. Come means with. Pane means bread. So a companion is someone you break bread with, someone you share bread with. You are companions on the journey. Okay, we talked about brooms and bread. Now breakfast. Who likes to go out for breakfast? Almost everybody, right? I have to say, on all the years I've been a priest, in the morning masses, you can tell who hasn't had breakfast yet because their stomachs are growling. And you know what? The word breakfast means breaking the fast. So literally, you're breaking the fast of not eating from the night before. And we fast as Catholics during Lent, not to lose weight, but that helps, I guess. Not to lose weight, but we fast so that when our stomachs are growling, we realize that there are people whose stomachs are growling every day. So it forces us then to share what bread that we have. A little trivia about breakfast and toast. You almost always have toast at breakfast. You know, at weddings and funerals and any kind of celebrations of life, sometimes people will hold up a glass of wine or beer or soda or water and say a toast. A toast to the newlyweds. And that custom goes back to the Middle Ages when they weren't sure how to make wine or beer and sometimes it came out kind of bitter. So they put a piece of toast in the glass to absorb the bitterness. So when someone said toast, it meant I need another drink. So a toast came from that moment in time in history. Gospel today is from St. John and Jesus says, listen how many times he says, I am. I am the bread came down from heaven. I am the bread of life. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. When Moses asked God on the mountain, who are you? Who shall I say sent me? God answers, tell them, I am sent you. I am. So when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, I am the bread from heaven, I am the living bread, he is saying, I am. I am God. So what's the message today then with brooms, bread, and breakfast, Elijah the prophet under the broom tree, St. Paul, St. John, and our beloved Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the message is found in a song. There's a song made popular by Maurice Chevalier, who was a vaudeville French actor and singer. And he made famous a song called Sweeping the Clouds Away. Sweeping the Clouds Away. You might want to just Google that. It's a fun song to listen to. Not to be confused with the Muppets chasing the clouds away. <laughs> this is sweeping the clouds away. And this is how the lyrics go. Don't go around moping, hoping happiness will come. That's not the way. It doesn't pay. If you want happiness, just help yourself to some. Why don't you try to take life the way I do? Let the whole world sigh or cry. I'll be high in the sky, up on top of a rainbow, sweeping the clouds away. So every time you sweep the kitchen floor, if you're willing to realize that God's calling you to be sweeping the clouds away for the poor, the lonely, and the people in your life, let the church say, 
I'm on top of the rainbow, sweeping the clouds away. I'm on top of the rainbow, sweeping the clouds away. And if you're willing to be shade in the desert, to be a broom tree, a shelter, and a safe haven, let the church say, I'll be the angel and help you, Elijah. I'll be the angel and help you, Elijah. And finally, as companions on the journey, on our way home to heaven, as we go to the table of the Lord every Sunday, let the church say, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Amen.